Hi, and welcome back to Saga Hunter's YouTube channel. Um, this is the third kind of paper, pastel paper, non-sanded, that I got from my Jackson Art Supply test pack I bought, a sample pack. This is Clairefontaine. The, the first two I was testing uh, was from Hannemühle, a German company. And this is Claire Fontaine's Ingress pastel paper, and it has kind of a surface that looks a little bit like uh, like the surface of a canvas, a uh, paint canvas. It's 360 GSM, but if you look at it and and see how it is, it is not like anything like a 360 GSM uh, watercolor paper. It's way thinner. So maybe a a little bit stiff though and I suppose that these are it's because that these um, the fibers in this is pressed hard together it is it's much more dense than uh, than a watercolor paper so um, I sketched up a little frog because I'm going to start with testing uh, color pencils as I did with the two others and I'll test a little bit of, of um, pastel pencils as well. So um, this is going to be like a little turquoise uh, frog. And actually I'll pull up my, see if I can find my reference photo. I can't. I'll just kind of try and wing it. <coughs> Because I'm not sh I'm, I'm starting to think that these pastel papers are just not good for col with colored pencils. So um, this far, I, I have not been super impressed. I have to say, with how how they work with colored pencils, they've been fantastic with uh, with uh, what's it called? Well, the pastels were well, both the oil and the uh, and the soft pastels, but that's also what the paper was meant for. So um, these are pro colors; they're fairly hard pencils. They're not as hard, quite as hard as the what are they call. They are called the artist pencils from from Durand, which is the hardest colored pencils I've, I've come across yet uh, at least in the in the art uh, grade selection of, of things of pencils so I decided to to go with the pro colors because I haven't really used my pro colors all that much so I I want to get to know them a little better Takes color well enough for the base layer, and but that's been true for for the others as well. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you can see that it uh, the the texture of the paper shows through a lot on this la layer here. Um, but it is also really heavily textured, and it's it's really hard as well. Um, it doesn't give in. I, I don't think I will at any point have to worry about burnishing the the texture of the paper away because I don't think I uh, quite honestly can unless I really, really, really push hard on it. Um, So um, that that's a benefit, of course. If if you're heavy-handed, a, a hard kind of paper like this might might help you a little bit because you can't burnish it like you would with not even by accident, like you, you like you might do with a watercolor paper or 
of the softer types of, of, of papers. Try not to leave white spots here in the middle of the dots. But it takes a lot of layers to fill up all this uh, tooth on the paper, the structure of the paper. So that that's that could be a minus, unless you like this kind of that you that that it's okay for you that the the texture of the paper shows through. I, I actually think it it gives a kind of an interesting look to the drawing. I, I don't mind so much that you can see that it is either a drawing or a painting. I think this actually gives kind of like a canvas or a painting kind of look to things. I have previously done some coloring pencil work on Canson Metain's paper and this feels a lot like it. Um, got that really hard feeling. You can't. I'll try up here on the top. This is as hard as I can push. And I can still feel the texture of the paper. So you can't flatten that. You might be able to fill it. I mean, see, that was even as hard as I could or I right dared without breaking the pencil. And it's still not quite filled up. So I, I quite frankly don't think it's possible to burnish this paper. go in and color up those spots again but it I think the thighs on this is too short it was quite a good quick sketch I did so it is definitely too long in the body the head should have been like here oh well next time wasn't to make it perfect, the point was to test the paper for its abilities to, to take this color. So this is even more rough than, than even sanded paper is. I would probably, if I should use it for color pencils, I would probably choose to um, to do a bigger piece so that the structure of the paper didn't uh, matter so much, to blur out the details as much. I might buy some of this because actually kind of like this and it's also nice to, to to write on with the with a fine liner and it also took well to the pencil and the pencil was really easy to erase on this actually uh, and 
I don't think I left any grooves when I did the, the sketch. So, um, I think it ha that's... That's some benefits to it. Oh. Seems to layer okay, this pencil on this paper. I want something even darker than this. Dark indigo, but it's not very sharp. So let me sharpen up my pencil here. These are good for detailing because they can be sharpened to a very fine point. So you can go in and really mark up all your finer little details. So yeah, I'd say this this works okay with color pencils. It it gets a little waxy after a while, but it seems like I can still layer on top of what I already got. And these are hard pencils, so they should have a harder time on this paper than the soft ones and I haven't even tried those yet but it takes but but then again hard hard pencils they always take lots of layers but here it is actually possible to, to do I want to try see if I can make a highlight here somewhere well, that's not working too well but it's um, I don't know if it's this white pencil or the paper that is doing that let me try and use a white from soft trust a soft pencil to be able to make highlights so I'll try and color in the leaf here and do it with the color soft that are the soft cousins of the pro colors And it gives off more pigment in, in each passing than the the heart pencils. I 
and you can really see again that it it doesn't just automatically fill up the the structure of the paper now <laughs> whether or not I like the paper to show through this way very much depends on what kind of a pattern the the surface of the paper has I quite like this it's even and nice and it's the same all over the paper um, the ingress paper from Hannah Mule had those bars going across and I like them less they, and, and they show up too if you would do something like this on a whole big piece with a color pencil it doesn't really show when you use soft pastels so for that it doesn't really matter but uh, if I have to see the, the texture through my coloring or drawing I want it to be even so it's your, your eye doesn't catch up uh, catch on on, on a, a particular line somewhere you're still looking at the, the subject and it's not getting disturbed by by paper patterns I would not like to to draw on something where the paper is embossed for instance where there's embossed into it what kind of brand it is and stuff like that that I find really annoying if, if that shows through I don't mind that, that, that <laughs> you can if you really look that you can see what kind of paper it is it's fair enough that they want some credit for their work but um, if it steals the, the attention from my hard work I don't like it so it's kind of a base layer and I've been kind of sloppy because I'm just testing out how well it covers I'd say this is the the best one I uh, paper for colored pencils I've I've tried this far in this pack. The first one was too smooth. That was the Lana color, but it worked so good with the the pastel, both the oil and the and the soft pastel. That was beautiful. Um. The Ingress paper from Hannah Mula, um, I'd say it was okay for practice pieces uh, for pastels, but I don't think I would use it for a permanent piece. It's kind of thin and flimsy and I'll show you what happens when I use it even straighten out. But here's uh, the, my budged uh, <laughs> oil pastel drawing and my soft pastel drawing. But look at the paper, it totally warped like this when I treated it with fixative to, to keep it from smearing. I can't and I won't mount this in a frame, so I gave it a good deal of fixative gave it two layers and now the paper is just curled like that <coughs> and that's because it's too thin you can't take the the treatment so I was not very impressed with that so 
So right now the, the competition is between this and the Lana color. And I like this better than the Lana color. But it's it's very much a at least for color pencils. But it's a matter of, of taste and if you're somebody who doesn't need to sit and and layer a lot then um, you might be able to use the Lana color paper. Or if you, uh, if you maybe if you use uh, Wilmes and, and things like that, blenders and stuff, then you might, especially if yeah, uh, Wilmes is and other solvents might might work for you because you can dissolve the the wax from the pencils when you get a wax build up. And um, and then you can work on afterwards. But I I sometimes do use it, but I prefer not to. I don't like the smell of it. I want to use a light green too to to deepen the color and make it more vivid. It's a very good idea for pastels and for colored pencils that you use the rule of three. You always use a light, a medium and a dark color and then you kind of use all of them together everywhere. But you put, of course, more dark some places and more light other places. But it really make your colors a lot more vibrant. If you do that, use at least three colors in the same kind of coloring, color group. Now my dark here is a bit uh, on the blue side. <coughs> <coughs> but you would normally pick like yellowish greens or bluish greens. If it's greens we are talking about. But if you're careful, you, you can't get away with it. Like here, use a yellowish green and a, uh, a bluish green together. I'm a little curious though. Just a little bit. Um, I was told that I could use, or saw it online, that I can use a alcohol marker blender as a blender for color pencil. I'm a little curious if it works here. It seems to do. It takes some of that. It fills in the the white holes and smooth things out. And I actually find this easier to, to do than I brush with OMS and it does not smell as offensive as for instance Cested. Cested uh, smells really good in the beginning. It starts out smelling like lemons and then as soon as the lemon zest smell disappears or scent I guess then it just stinks of turpentine so I actually might just adopt this I quite like this now the nip gets dirty, but that's okay. I can clean that off on a different sheet of paper or up here where I'm doing scribbles. This is a test sheet, so. Hmm. This is quite cool because these are easy to get. If I wear one out.
Oh, I found I had to do the whole thing. <laughs> That is very cool, but it keeps the, you can still see the texture, but it's not as, as clear. So that is, wow, cool. And I'm so sorry, I can't give you credit for whoever said this. It was a color pencil artist that was saying she had used um, the Derwent blender. They they make kind of like a marker blender, but you could use, and it was alcohol based, but you could use kind of any alcohol marker blender as you like because it worked the same way. I haven't bought the, I've looked at them, but I haven't bought the Derwent Blender pen. But I got this one. So, and I don't use really blender, these blenders for markers. Not very much, at least. Um, but I have a couple of them because sometimes they show up if you buy a package or something. This one came with all the markers that Melissa kindly sent it me. Sent it me. <laughs> so. And this will probably be even better on smoother paper. The lip does get a lot dirty though. Does get a little bit of a build up on top of it. chisel tip on the other end so maybe that would speed things up. It is fairly big areas anyways. Oh wow that's very wet as well. Yes it's bad things. <laughs> By a lot. It might also be better because it's probably also easier to, to clean. So yeah, my Pro Marker Blender worked great. That was a fun experience. And it soaked the paper. It doesn't matter too much. Um, so now I should be able to go in again with the mid green and add some little more. Texture to things. It softened the paper up, bit, so I guess it's not quite dry yet. Up there is definitely not dry.
So, um, I could probably sit here for another two or three hours and add layers and details and stuff to this um, without any problems. Yeah, and this feels, get that slightly rough feeling again now that I went over it with the with the blender. So it did dissolve some of the wax because this still feels really that waxy smooth color, uh, feel. So I could probably finish a, a quite detailed drawing on this. And I think I actually already know without having tried anything else on it, I actually might consider buying some of this as much as I like pastel matte it, it's really hard on my pencil so for just practice pieces like this where uh, I might or might not finish a drawing and, and the sketch is not perfect from the start but I'm just kind of trying things out um, I, I, I f the pastel matte is really expensive and, and it, it really chews up my pencils as well so I would like to have a good paper where I can practice on um, that doesn't cost a fortune but it's still good enough that so that you know, sometimes practice pieces turn into kind of like real pieces if they turn out good so I, I might get something that I say okay that I'm, I'm happy with this and um, and it's still on a decent piece of paper and so um <laughs> i usually write up here if so let's say color pencils is okay could definitely work on that And even it, it's still even here where I didn't get use the blending, the blender. It's it, I can still work on this, and I can get quite many layers on here. Now I got these pastel pencils that I've been trying to use for backgrounds on the other kinds of paper, and it haven't been good on either paper. These are really hard. And if the, if the paper isn't up to a lot of scrubbing, the, the, on the Hannah Muller Ingress paper, it totally peeled up the, the, the surface. And very quickly. I know you shouldn't blend with your fingers, but I do on practice pieces. Even if I like a practice piece when it's done, I'm not ever selling practice pieces. So, any pro people who don't like this method, I'm aware of it, and I don't care. Not when it's just something like this. Plus, I don't have particularly oily fingers. this I mean it's okay for for doing kind of line work and detailing but for for covering and coloring in it's not good but uh, yeah it's uh, I don't think I ever find a paper that is good for just straight pastel pencils. It's not even half fun to, to do. It's scratchy and yeah, no, not really good. I'm not gonna continue this because it's just not
so Clairefontaine Ingress Pastel Paper 360 GSM. Thumbs up for colored pencils on that. Provided you don't mind that you can see through the structure through. So 